Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to film a little disassembly video for you of this guy. This is a Spyderco Dragonfly knife, except it's in G10, uh, rather than the FRN that they usually come in. And so it puts together and takes apart a little bit differently than the rest of your dragonflies out there in the world. So, um, yeah, one thing to keep in mind always is that Spyderco has a policy such that when you disassemble the knife, the warranty on the knife becomes null and void. That's ugly, but it's life. They're able to make that decision if they see fit, just like I'm able to quetch about it all the damn time. So there you go, something to keep in mind. Let's go on ahead and do some disassembling of this particular knife. Um, yeah, here we go. So step one is going to be to go ahead and remove this um, pocket clip. So just going to go up inside there uh, with a Torx T8. T8. Yeah, T8. And uh, pop that out of there. And I'm just going to use a little oiler tool here. That's actually a spring bar tool for a watch. But I'm going to try and push that out. But I'm not going to try too hard. Looks like it's stuck in there. This guy is a little bit on the dirty side. So it really does need some love. And I want to thank uh, uh, an anonymous viewer who's not actually anonymous, whose just name I've forgotten at the moment. But he is based in Sweden, I believe, um, for sending this guy along. Actually, whoa there. Got a fly and pivot here. Just a second. It's not a pivot, that's a... Uh... There we go. Clip bolt, Chicago screw, whatever. But anyways, he gifted this knife to me um, just because he didn't carry it very often and he thought it would be great on the channel. And indeed it is. So thank you very much, viewer, whose name I've forgotten. And I feel really bad about that right now, actually. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You should always remember who does good things for you. And you should remember who does crappy things to you, but that's for a different reason. <laughs> Anyways, moving along. So I just popped out the pivot as well. Uh, one thing to note on the pivot is that it's got this little washer right behind the pivot. You can see here it's a two-part thing. Make sure that goes back on there. All righty. I'm going to pop out this screw here, which actually controls your back lock, and then this screw here... Uh, deals with the back spaces. So I'm going to kind of array these in the order they came off the knife just so I can find them again later on and so I don't get so damn confused. Popping this guy off. There we go. Nope. That one started to pop out. Okay, um, that's going to have it under the least tension. And there we go. That will pop out our back lock bar. Now the blade is just swinging freely like a chicken with its head almost cut off. That's a terrible image. Nearly headless Nick from the Harry Potter except with a blade. That's much better. And uh, we can take this guy the rest of the way apart here. So let's do that. The only thing that's left in here is the... Um, the G10 backspacer lanyard hole here and uh, the backspacer screw, that's solved. Now, there remains a big question of whether we can take the knife the rest of the way apart here. Hey, that's not much of a question, is it now? Okay, there are washers. There's one, there's two. Okay, problem solved, case closed. And the knife is, oh, this is greasy. This needs love. Sometimes the reason I was talking questions is the uh, the Japanese factory by Spyderco has a nasty habit of putting in these lanyard tubes in such a way that they they're peened open. You, they're really hard to take apart, and that's that's ugly. Um, and it sometimes means that knives can't be disassembled at all. The uh, Spyderco Ouroboros has a terrible case of that. Go ahead and use a little fabric swatch here, coated in some rubbing alcohol, ninety one percent isopropyl, and go ahead and. Start wiping this grease off here. I am going to go ahead and frog lube this knife because the uh, G10 and the liners are right up against each other. And that's a recipe for rustins if you're not, uh, not careful. So that's clean. Let's clean this little backspacer portion here. There's a lot of gunk up on that. It almost looks like somebody hit this with WD-40 at some point. And that's ugly. Um, WD-40 has no business anywhere around knives. 
means water displacement. That's what WD is for. For some reason, people have got it in their heads that it is a great lubricant and that it's the only lubricant you need in the household. That is not true. But it leaves kind of a yellow cakiness that's pretty, pretty recognizable and gums up the works eventually. So don't do it. I'm going to go ahead and leave the backlock spring in there because it doesn't want to go out of there. And that's just fine by me. There's no problem with it staying in place. Now I'm going to clean off the back lock here. Clean and clean and clean. And. This is a really interesting little knife, the G10 Dragonfly. It's it's kind of it's very strange. You know, the Dragonfly, the normal uh, FRN Dragonfly is obviously a great knife. It's a gem. I haven't actually fully reviewed this G10 guy. I've had it forever now, but I, I just I haven't gotten around to it. As I often mention, knives that are in my private collection are not knives that tend to get reviewed quickly, because loners are much more immediate. Somebody's waiting for it again. But it's interesting having this little guy. And once I get the action cleaned up, I mean, I literally I haven't had a chance to even get it cleaned up yet. That's how crazy busy I've been. And I just took down the FRN one, so I'm curious, like right now, uh, for another video. Uh, and so I'm a little curious how the two compare. I'm using right now my little oiler tool to scrape a little bit of crud off of there. I'm actually going to use the tool. I'm going to wrap it in this little patch here and then uh, try and get it that. There we go. Hey, that worked like a freaking charm. Make sure on a back lock that you're cleaning this surface here on the back because that's quite literally where it locks. Uh, and if that's got gunk on it and whatnot, that'll interfere with your lock up. And that's ugly. You don't want that. You don't want any part of that. Okay, and there's grease on this side too. Oh boy. No good. Bad nose freaking bears. I'm moving to a new patch. I, I give. You can order like a thousand of these for 15 bucks or something like that, so I'm not exactly breaking the bank by using two of them. There we go. Continuing with the grease removals here. Although grease is the word, it's not what you want on the inside of your knife. No. I'm not a big fan of musical theater. Sorry to say. No judgment if you are, but... And Grease, of course, being a seminal American musical. One that was performed by my high school way back when. I was not involved, but I did go see it. And by the end of it, I was hoping very much that they would not tell me more. Not to diminish the talents of the hardworking individuals involved. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just ranting. So, right now I'm just cleaning off these little guys here. Clean off the pivot a little bit. I'm going to clean the washers now, which are very, very paper freaking thin little affairs here wow there we go pop that out there we go just barely enough there that's clean lock bar is clean ish i've wiped off the g10 on both sides I believe this knife is cleaned up now. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover it in some frog lube. Um, these liners here, like I said, you always want to make sure when you've got... Maybe I said this today, maybe I didn't. But you always want to make sure when you've got um, metal liners right up against G10 carbon fiber, something along those lines, that the uh, side of the metal liners that never really sees the light of day is coated in some kind of a, um, a rust protectant. I'm using frog lube uh, CLP paste here, but, uh, the, the reasoning behind that is that you want to make sure that, uh, if water gets trapped behind there, you don't have this terrible cycle of rust that just destroys the knife entirely. Um, 
practically speaking, how likely is that? Very unlikely, but it's not a bad thing to do whatsoever. You also want to make sure on a knife like this that has symmetrical liners that the um, proper side is placed up against the blade here. You can see that right here there is actually some wear from the washer, whereas on the other side there is not. And so uh, I wanted to make sure that before I did all of my coatings and whatnot, I, uh, I was using the right uh, liner on the right side here. So there you go. Um, let's go ahead and drop in the pivot. Now that I've got this all set, the pivot screw here is D-shaped, uh, more specifically the pivot bolt. It's D-shaped, so I'll go nicely. And uh, actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to drop in these other two bolts because it can't hurt. There we go. The FRN Dragonfly is one piece of plastic in the back here, which means that you have to put it together a little bit more like an integral and is a little bit more of a pain in the neck. Um, this G10 guy puts together much more like a uh, conventional sort of knife, which I appreciate. You can kind of use the uh, sandwich method. We build it like a sandwich. Oh, come on now. I'm just trying to pop this clip screw hole through here. Wait, which side? No, the clip doesn't go on that side. Okay, never mind. Crisis averted. Put them back together. So I'm going to put a little frog lube on the backspacer here as well. Just distribute it nicely. Distribute it over the spring. Can't hurt. Might help. It's a very sharp piece there. Ah, little bugger. Slip this guy over there. Now we have everything put back together in that way. That's nice. Excellent. Uh, what's going to be my next step here? Okay, I'm going to get out my lube. I'm going to use a uh, the 85 weight nano oil here. Yeah, I am. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use frog lube. I'm going to use the liquid frog lube. The reason for that is that this is a backlock knife. It's never going to be particularly, uh, and i got a zip tie just in case here, um, if I need to use the Apostle P method here. But anyways, um, you know, mixing lubrication is not necessarily a great idea. And a backlock knife, whoa, that was way overboard. It's okay. Um, a backlock knife is never going to be um, perfection in terms of, there we go, kind of distributed, in terms of action. It's always going to be a little bit on the slow side, and so I'm not super concerned about really, really excellent uh, action, free swing and dude here. So if I can avoid mixing lubricants, um, so to speak, here, then I, I'd like to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more um, frog lube on the... Uh, Lock bar here. Excellent. Now, the big question. The million dollar question, if you will. Can I install the lock bar? Yes. So, okay. I'd like you to see this. If this is going to work, I'm going to seem really neat. What I've done here is I've put the lock bar on it at angle so that the head of it is on top of the blade and that the bottom of it is in touch with the spring. So I'm going to use that to try and wedge the lock bar up. And then once it's in position, oh, damn, I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and just drop it back down into position. This allows me to skip the zip tie method for controlling that. And, oh, that was just so damn good. Some days I feel like I'm actually competent at life. And that this is one of those days. I am a freaking wizard. I know you're sitting at home going, Nick, don't. But nonetheless, give me this moment, please. Freaking wizard. The Gandalf of knife disassembly and reassembly. Dumbledore, even. All righty. Full of Harry Potter references tonight, aren't I? All right. So uh, now I'm going to drop this other line around here. No, is that? Oh, hey, no, I'm not because I haven't put the washer back on. Hey, so much for being a freaking wizard, right? You take those moments while you can get them. go. 
Okay, <laughs> now, now that my uh, my wizarding is done, let's go ahead and drop this liner back onto the back of the knife here. Things are a little out of alignment here, and I'm not so sure about why that's the case. That's in alignment here. Just trying to get this back. So my problem here is that the um, the liner does not want the... I'm, I'm hooked back here, that's no problem, and I'm hooked around this chunk of the liner, but up front here, it's a little too far back, so I'm going to try and apply a little. There we go. Now I got it stuck there. There we go. And now the pivot's the rest of the way through. So this little chunk is now reassembled. Make sure all the frog lube is evenly spread and distributed, if you will. Now we drop some G10 on the front of it now. I'm going to say now a few more times. That seems like a good thing there, because I haven't said now at all recently. There we go. Pop the G10 onto there. Case closed. Uh, now I just got to reassemble everything. Uh, re-screw everything down. You can see right now there are some pretty serious gaps between the backspacer and the... And that's just because things aren't under enough screw tension yet. So let's go ahead and start screwing. <laughs> Sorry. Context. Um, a phrasing. That's right. That's the... I'm going to use a little bit of blue Loctite on this little guy here. And I'm going to throw screws everywhere. The wizard thing out the window now. Relish the moments when you got them, kids. Because it's all downhill from there. Drop this guy into here. And I'm kind of just barely tightening it down a little bit. Nothing too out of control. I'll go back and do a retighten once everything else is in. It's seldom a good idea to fully crank something down before everything else is in position. Because often you need a little bit of play to put things back together. Ah, you little son of a... Did that just cut me open? I don't know. Well, either way, I'm going to either start bleeding here or just complain a lot. The issue is that my fingers are lubricated, so is the bit, so it's not coming out of there. And uh, that's that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Pride comes before the fall. You remember that, okay? I, of all people, should know this. So I'm popping the pivot back in place there, and I've made sure that little washer is on the uh, the side of the pivot here. Now I just got to remember which side the clip goes on. The clip will go on the other side of this. So... The uh, clip bolt goes here. No, I'm not bleeding. Hooray. If that's your measure for success, whether or not you're bleeding at any given moment. There we go. That's popped through. Now, what I'm going to do, another little trick, is you uh, pinch the head of the screw with the clip, the wire clip, and use that to kind of get it up into there. Oh, damn it, I didn't put Loctite on it. Oh, uh, Nick. So, got that screwing in. Did I put this on the right side? Yeah, I did. I'm going to go ahead and just start off by tightening down this screw here. You're going to see this head kind of retreat into between the G10. Make sure that it's all the way torqued down. You know, don't go crazy with it, but at the same time... Get it tight. Problem solved. Yeah. Clips on the right side. Now I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually, in this case, I'm going to loosen the pivot a little bit. Just making sure that it's properly nested in there. That's still a little bit tight. Centering is good to go. No blade play. I could probably run that a little looser. I feel like this pivot screw should be dropping into the inside of the G10 there. I really do. 
Is there some kind of a bar that's preventing that? I think it's wanting to. This little washer thing that comes with the pivot is inside there. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bar from the G10 that's preventing that. I feel like that should go flush. In practice, does it actually matter? No, not really. It would be a nice thing to see. Actually, come to think of it. I'm just going to use this little guy here. Remember, the G10 is nasty stuff. Sanding G10 is never a good idea. I mean, without the right protective equipment. But anyways, I'm just using this other dragonfly here. <coughs> Pardon me, debar the G10 there, and see if that lets the pivot drop the rest of the way in. If it doesn't, that's no big deal. But I, I, I want to give it a shot. I want to see whether that can happen. Here's my pivot screw again. Since I unlocked it, or un pulled it out of there, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit more Loctite, because it can't hurt. Slide it in there. You know, no, this doesn't seem to want to go inside that little countersink hole there. Could be a, a QC issue, but it's holding the, the knife uh, the proper tension, so I'm not going to get bent out of shape about it. Or maybe that's just supposed to sit up high. If you've got a G10 Dragonfly, let me know if your screw goes all the way in or if it sits up on the top like this guy does. I'm just curious now. Just kind of letting everything settle in there. No blade play. Falls relatively shut, nice and free. Beautiful. Okay, then I'm going to use my pliers because one finger sacrifice is enough. Thank you. Hey, still not bleeding. Great. And uh, one of these days I'm going to cut myself good during a disassembly. I don't know why I'm laughing at that idea, but... As somebody who works with knives regularly, you'd think I'd be just covered in battle wounds all the damn time, but I'm not. Let's loosen this up just a little tiny bit here. Just trying to get everything dialed in. Tightening this guy down actually increased tension on the blade to no appreciable positive effect. So I tweak that a little bit. No blade play. We're good to go now. Uh, the very last thing I always do on any kind of a backlock is I apply a little bit of uh, lubrication, something thick. So your 85 weight nano oil at work, your frog lube, since I'm already using it, just to the tang of the blade here. And that just helps to uh, ensure that the uh, the lock bug glides gracefully across the top of the back lock, uh, the blade tang, that is, rather than scraping terribly. Uh, and there we go. We have now completely disassembled and reassembled our Spyderco uh, Dragonfly number two here in uh, your G10 scales. Hope this has been interesting to you, that you uh, enjoy, that you have no trouble putting it back together, that you two are more like a wizard than a jackass. Um, even if I am not, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. That the dragonfly doesn't bug you in this assembly? Uh, okay, I should stop. Bye now.